turn in your King James Bible to the book of Isaiah, chapter 57. A very important study today, very timely with all that's going on with Israel and their war against Hamas and uh, the Ishmaelites that are in the land that don't belong there. According to the scriptures, the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. But uh, people get me confused. They'll say, well, you're defending the nation of Israel. That means you must be for the Jewish people. Well, yes, I am. Oh, then you think that they're wonderful and they're saved and going to heaven. I didn't say that. Um, the Jewish people right now are in unbelief. They do not believe that Jesus is their Messiah. And there's a lot of sins there. And uh, this study is going to be rebuking their primary sin. And I do not say this out of hatred. I say this out of love for the Jewish people and uh, the real Jewish people. Again, there's synagogue of Satan. They're not all of Israel, which say that they're of Israel. You know, we get that. We understand that. There's a lot of fake Jews out there. Lots of fake Jews. And Revelation 2.9, Revelation 3.9, like I said, identifies them as the synagogue of Satan. Um, I'm not defending them. All right. But there are true real, pure Jewish people out there. Um, and those are the ones that I'm going to be speaking to in this study. Isaiah chapter 57, we'll begin in verse 17. For the iniquity of his covetousness was I wroth, and smote him. I hid me, and was wroth, and he went on frowardly in the way of his heart. The uh, iniquity of his covetousness. Have the Jews been uh, very covetous? Yes, we're going to see that in this study. I have seen his ways and will heal him. I will lead him also and restore comforts unto him and to his mourners. So God is seeing the ways of the Jewish people, but he's going to heal them in the future. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. It's a time of God revealing himself to the Jews, to the nation of Israel. But it's also a time of, it's a time of chastening, but also a time of healing. Verse 19, I create the fruit of the lips, peace, peace to him that is far off, and to him that is near, saith the Lord, and I will heal him. But the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. Un remember that one. The wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters, waters, however you want to say it, I know I have an accent, waters cast up mire and dirt. Remember about the waters. Very important. Chapter 58, verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. One of the most amazing things of this pure, perfect word of God, the King James Bible, is it defines itself. Who's my people there? Verse 1. My people their transgression. My people. Transgression. The house of Jacob, their sins. Jacob, who is Jacob, also known as Israel. My people, transgression. The house of Jacob, sins. It's defining. What is transgression? Sins. What is my people? The house of Jacob. It's beautiful. It's an amazing book. But you see, that's what this study is going to be all about. This study is going to be about showing the people of Israel those who have ears to hear. Um, I'm giving you an or early warning of what's going to come in the future. I am going to prophesy your future for you today based on the scriptures, not because I've seen a vision or I fell into a trance and God showed things to me or whatever else. No, God speaks to me through his word and he says, puts conviction in me and puts scriptures into my mind and says, you need to preach this. And that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be preaching a sermon which very few preachers in the world will preach because they don't have the guts to preach it because they're tied into the very system that I'm about to kick. And that is the truth. Let's go to Isaiah 28. Isaiah 28. There's an old saying, to be forewarned is to be forearmed. That, again, is the purpose of this study. I'm forewarning you so that you can be forearmed. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 1. Let's start there. Woe to the crown of pride, to the drunkards of Ephraim. Hmm, another key word, drunkards. Remember that. Waters and drunkards. Remember it. 
whose glorious beauty is a fading flower, which are on the head of the fat valleys of them that are overcome with wine. It's interesting because if you study the history of Israel, going back to the Old Testament and coming forward to the New Testament, you can see that that glory that they had under King David and then Solomon, it just diminishes and diminishes and diminishes and diminishes. And today, they're a far cry from what they once were. Verse 2, Behold, the Lord hath a mighty and strong one, which as a tempest of hail and a destroying storm, as a flood of mighty waters overflowing, shall cast down to the earth with the hand. The crown of pride, the drunken, drunkards of Ephraim, shall be trodden under feet. Interesting tie into the New Testament because it talks about the holy city will be trodden under the feet of the Gentiles. Hmm. Shall be trodden under feet. A lot of tie-ins between the Old Testament and the New Testament. You would do well to study the New Testament with an open mind if you're Jewish. Never mind what your rabbi says. Study it for yourself in the King James Bible. Okay, not the NIV or the ESV or any of the other ones that come from the Vatican. You have enough problems if you're Jewish messing around with the Vatican. We'll get back to that one. Oh, believe me, we will. Um, verse 4. And the glorious beauty which is on the head of the fat valley shall be a fading flower, and as the hasty fruit before the summer, which when he that looketh upon it seeth, while it is yet in his hand, he eateth it up. And that day shall the Lord of hosts be for a crown of glory, and for a diadem of beauty unto the residue of his people, and for a spirit of judgment to him that sitteth in judgment, and for strength to them that turn the battle to the gate." Huh, the judgment of the nations, mentioned in Matthew chapter 25, when the Lord comes down and judges the nations. Makes a full end of all nations, whether he has scattered them, but he doesn't make a full end of the nation of Israel. Verse 7, But they also have erred through wine, and through strong drink are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink. They are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision, they stumble in judgment, for all tables are full of vomit and filthiness, so that there is no place clean. Boy, the Lord's trying to really make a point here about this thing of wine and drunkenness. Remember that. Verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Comparing scripture with scripture. That's what I'm doing here. And like I said, the New Testament, oh, it's so it's such an anti-Semitic book. No, it's not. It's written by Jews, for Jews, and Gentiles as well. We're you know, brought in by a spirit of promise there uh, in terms of adoption, spirit of adoption, not promise, excuse me. But it's for Jews. It's not an anti-Jewish book in the New Testament. And, you know, there's far less said against the nation of Israel in the New Testament as opposed to the Old Testament. There's a lot of things back here condemning the Jewish people in the Old Testament. A lot of wickedness and a lot of sin. So, but you have to compare. Compare Scripture with Scripture. Old Testament, New Testament. I've seen, I saw a Jewish rabbi the one time and he said, there's only one New Testament prophecy and it failed or something like this. Uh, no, there's many prophecies in the New Testament. Many Jewish rabbis, I'm afraid, are very ignorant of the New Testament in the King James Bible. Verse 11, For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Another tongue? You mean like Greek for the New Testament and then English for the completed Bible? That's exactly it. To whom he said, This is the rest wherewith ye may cause this weary to rest, and this is the refreshing, yet they would not here. But the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. What happened to the Jews in the first century? Jesus said, points at the temple and he says, not one stone shall be left upon another till all be thrown down. Prophesize happened in the first century. They said, oh no, it didn't. We still have our wall. We still have the Temple Mount. We still have the wall. That's Fort Antonia. If you just read the scriptures, you'll see in the book of Nehemiah, you'll see that it's in the city of David, that temple that was built, the last one before it was destroyed. So it's in the city of David, not over there where the Fort Antonia is. 
where the current uh, Temple Mount is. It's not the Temple Mount. It's a Roman fort. You see, the Jews got in bed with Rome, which is the whole point of the study. I'll be showing you some very interesting things here. And I'm going to answer all the anti-Semitic little idiots out there, all the little trad cat, papist, Nazi, fascist, whatevers, that say that the Jews run the world. That is the dumbest lie that I've ever heard. And I've debunked it for years. And I'm going to debunk it from the pages of the King James Bible and show you that it's absolute nonsense. The Jews don't run the world. All right? <laughs> That's stupid. But, uh... If you want to get mad and whatever, write your little comments in the comment section below and go watch something else or play video games, you know, whatever. Um, <clears throat> I'm, again, raise up my voice like a trumpet. Spare not. I don't care about your feelings. I care about the Word of God. And I know if I lie to you to try to get your money and try to make you feel good, then I'm actually doing you a disservice. I'm going to tell you the truth and I'm going to tell it in a blunt, brutally honest way. And if you get offended by the truth, well, then go do something else. <clears throat> I'm not doing this just to be a jerk. I want you to know the truth. The worst thing out there are preachers that are ambiguous. And you come away saying, is he for that or against it? I'm not really sure. I want you to know plainly what I'm saying in this study. That's very important. Real preachers are nasty and mean and whatever else because they love you. The fake ones are the ones that come to you with good words and fair speeches and deceive the hearts of the simple. Through uh, those good words, they'll, they'll make merchandise of you, like the New Testament warns about. But uh, let's get back to it here. Um, verse 14. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. Because ye have say, said, we have made a covenant with death. Very important. Covenant with death. And with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us, for we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. It blows my mind, all the things that the Jews are doing. How they've lied and things and, and all this stuff. All this attack, Hamas attacked us on, what was it, October 7th or something, 2023 here. Uh, they attacked us. They knew that the attack was coming. Give me a break. Uh, they just kind of, all oh, the guys came in and started to attack things and, the military is going, we didn't even see it coming. Oh, please. You did that as a way to get rid of them out of your land. Okay, I understand. It's a military tactic. All right, there's some intelligence to that. You can't just go and attack them and say we're pushing them out unprovoked. So you let the provocation happen, then you can go in and, you know, get out. Away you go. Smart move. Okay. But you're hiding behind lies. A lot of these Jews out there, they're ashamed of their, their nose. The big Jewish nose, you know, they'll say about the hooked nose, the beaked nose, whatever else. And they'll go out and they'll get rhinoplasty. Try to cover up their God-given features. Intermarry with other people and things like that to get rid of their Jewish name. Adopt other names and things of Europeans, white Europeans, to get rid of their Jewish names. And hide. That's lying. You're hiding yourself. You're not trusting in God. God can protect you. God can preserve you. God can give you your land back. The land that's rightfully yours according to the scriptures. Not according to accords or concordates or whatever else. Or United Nations things. Or, forget all that stuff. What saith the scriptures? Verse 16. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lie in, lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Jesus Christ is what it's talking about there. Jesus fulfilled that prophecy. You don't have to believe that right now, but you will in the future. Verse 17. Judgment also will I lay to the line and righteousness to the plummet. And the, the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies, and the waters shall overflow the hiding place. There's that waters again. The waters are going to overflow the hiding place. Boy, there's some very deep prophetic significance to that. Very deep. Verse 18. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. Um, the current covenant that the Jews have with the Catholic Church, the Rome, you know, Rome, uh, there, um, that covenant 
is a covenant with death, you know, that the Jews made with Rome, that they made a long time ago, um, it's not going to stand. The Lord's going to disannul it. You see, there are certain prophecies which I can tell you, you know, and, well, there are certain predictions, I'll say it that way. I could predict certain things. I think it could go this way or could go that way. I don't really know, depending on what people do and things. But there are some prophecies in the scriptures that are 100% guaranteed to come to pass, even if the Jews themselves fight against it. Even if the Jews say, no, we love our relationship. It's Stockholm Syndrome. We love our abuser. The Crusaders and all the other things that treated us poorly and murdered us for thousands of years. Um, and, you know, these five kingdoms, fourth kingdom being the Rome, Imperial Rome, and then you had Papal Rome, the fifth kingdom mentioned in the book of Daniel. And that kingdom, even though they've treated us terribly, hey, we're making some really good money. They're, they make, like, you know, we work with them and we conspire with them and we make all this money. God doesn't care. So we're, we're getting along with them pretty well. Well, there's no fighting going on. So just kind of leave it alone. Don't, don't stir things up. You can kill me. You can get rid of me. You can do whatever you want. But God is going to come and disannul that covenant with death. He's going to stop it and say, okay, Israel, I'm bringing you back to your land in unbelief. Already did a study on that. I'm going to bring you back to your land and I'm going to disannul that covenant that you have with Rome. And if you study the book of Revelation, in the midst of the, the three weeks, the Antichrist causes the sacrifice and oblation to cease in the rebuilt temple. And then he says, okay, now you worship me. You worship the unholy trinity. And that's the only trinity that there is. There's an unholy trinity, the beast, the false prophet, and the dragon. Three-person trinity coming in the future. Outside of that, there is no three-person trinity. There's the Godhead. You can read about it in my book. You can read about it in God's book. Uh, the word Godhead appears three times. Hmm. Trinity appears zero. But let's continue here. Um, <clears throat> verse 19. From the time that it goeth forth, it shall take you. For morning by morning shall it pass over by day and by night. And it shall be a vexation only to understand the report. For the bed is shorter than that a man can stretch himself on it, and the covering narrower than that he can wrap himself in it. For the Lord shall rise up as in Mount Perizim, he shall be wroth as in the valley of Gibeon, that he may do his work, his strange work, and bring to pass his act, his strange act. It's going to seem really strange, you know, God dealing with lost people, lost lost uh, Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. And he's going to be doing some really wild stuff. I mean, third of all the trees burned up. Read the book of Revelation. Um, you know, third of all the people dying. and you know, All these horrible judgments. It's going to be a very strange time on earth. The strangest time that's ever been there. But God's doing it because the Jews require a sign. Hmm. Verse 22. Now therefore be ye not mockers, lest your bands be made strong, for I have heard from the Lord God of hosts a consumption, even determined upon the whole earth. Upon the whole earth. The time of Jacob's trouble. As in the days of Noah, so too shall be in the days before the coming of the Son of Man. Worldwide judgment. The Old Testament. The nation of Israel sinned. God judges the nation of Israel. And somebody over another continent, they don't even know the judgment's going on. But not this time. This time, God is going to judge the whole earth because of the nation of Israel. Because of their covenant with death that they made. Their covenant where they can hide and they can, they're, they're hiding behind lies out there. Their involvement with Hollywood. Their involv involvement with Mercantilism, merchandise, their involvement with banking and finance. But you see the, the real hidden thing here is that the Jews are put out there and people will do their research and they'll say, the Jews, there's a Jew behind everything. There's a Jew in this and there's a Jew in this. And the Jews must rule the world. Uh, no, actually, that would be the papal knights that control the Jews. You see, 
in order for the Jews to make a covenant with death, that means it has to be a covenant with somebody else besides themselves. Real difficult concept out there for the replacement theology tradcat papist idiots. The Jews made a covenant with someone. Okay? Um, and we're going to see who that was. Let's go to Revelation chapter 17. I do hope that you're remembering the wine and the waters. Because I told you to, and this is going to be on the test. Revelation 17, verses 1 through 6. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Huh, there's that word. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made <clears throat> drunk with the wine of her fornication? So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-collared beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet collar, and decked with gold and precious stones, and pearls having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. I did a whole study on why John wondered with great admiration. So I won't get into it here. But, um, hmm, this city clothed with uh, all the uh, arrayed in purple and scarlet collar. Now, let's see. Israel. Must be Israel. Uh, no, that's blue and white. Um, America. Well, that's red, white, and blue. Huh, well, we got the red there, but uh, didn't quite get it. What is the country that has people that are arrayed? Arrayed. They're wearing purple and scarlet. Oh, that's right. That would be the Vatican. Mm -hmm. Rome. You know, the one that's there in Rome? You know, Vatican City? I mean, you know, <laughs> a big shock there. Um, and who would be drunken with the blood of the saints and martyrs of Jesus? Uh, that, again, would be Rome. So, no, the, the, the Jews, they were the ones that, that uh, put Jesus to death. They're the ones that put him to death. Um, I don't think the Jews had crosses as a way to crucify people. No, it was the Jews and the Romans working together. Why? Because the Jews made a covenant with death. That's why. The Jews... Um, got to the point where they said, hey, um, instead of fighting against our enemy here, the fifth kingdom or the fourth kingdom at the time, um, maybe we could start to make some money with them. Yeah, we could kind of go into business together. You read about that in the New Testament. That's why they put Jesus to death because Jesus was starting to affect their income. They don't like that. You know, going and telling people that you don't need the synagogue Exposing the teachers that they're not actually following the law. <laughs> Diminishing their holy authority. Mm -hmm. Jump down to verse 15 in the same chapter, Revelation 17, verse 15. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest are upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. The words of God that most Jews don't believe right now. They will in the future. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. It's America! America's not a city. I have to do it again. I'm sorry. Bible believers, just give me a minute. I, I have to deal with these, you know, little trad cat replacement theology papist people. They're really dumb. Okay, here we go. Which reigneth, or excuse me, uh, the woman which thou sawest is that that great 
city. A city is not a country. A city is not a country. And if you say it is, if you put it in the comments down below that America is the great city, and what it, I'm going to have to, you know, make you say a city is not a country, you know, 100 times, write that out or something until it gets through the old thick head up there. Um, no. You say, well, the reformers, the reformers, the reformers didn't understand a lot of things. The reformers were trying to reform Roman Catholicism. Hardly somebody that you really want to listen to, you know, for great theological teaching. Um, I wouldn't listen to the reformers very much. Um, no, it's talking about Rome. Okay, the Vatican, Mystery Babylon. It's the only one that fits this whole thing. It's not Jerusalem. All right, <laughs> the Jews don't even have full control of Jerusalem. So how would that work? If it's the Jews that rule everything, then why don't they kick Jordan out of you know, owning the Temple Mount area there and whatever else. Why don't they kick the Catholic Church out? Um, it's the, you know, Vatican is the one, they are the ones that rule over all the kingdoms out there. And how do you know that? Again, um, where do you see all the world leaders going and bowing before, you know, Benjamin Netanyahu? They don't. Where do they go? They go to meet the Pope. The Pope comes to their country and whatever else and does his blessings and things and all this stuff. That's what's going on there. And again, a lot of people, oh, I just, you know, I saw a Catholic in the comments the other day and he said about how that uh, Roman Catholicism is no longer a world power. Well, either you're a liar or you're very deceived about your own system. Uh, it's called papal knighthoods. Knights of the Equestrian Order, Knights of Columbus, Knights of Malta, the Jesuit Order, um, Look at all the different world leaders and look at their tie-ins to Roman Catholicism. All right, they're trained by the Jesuits, many of them, or they have papal knighthoods. Guys in media, guys in industry, banking, whatever else. And then they have their little Jewish stooges that they control. The little Jews that they go out and they say, do our dirty work for us. And then when the blame comes, it'll hit the Jews and not the papists behind the Jews. But let's continue. Revelation chapter 18. Let's go to verse 1 here. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The wine there again. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Boy, those Jews love that money. That's what draws them in. That's why they made that covenant with death. Verse 4, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. What did we read in the Old Testament? My people, transgression. The house of Jacob, sins. Who's my people? You say, the Christian body of Christ. Oh, no, it can't be because we're not in bed with the Vatican. Um, I, very strongly, I very strongly oppose the Vatican and the Roman Catholic Church. I don't have to come out of the Roman Catholic Church. That doesn't even make any sense. Who's it talking about? It's talking about the Jews, the nation of Israel. Come out of her, my people. Reference to the nation of Israel because they have a covenant with death with the Roman Catholic Church. Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works, and the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow." Where do we see a queen with America? There's no queen. None. Uh, how about Israel? No queen. What do you have with uh, Roman Catholicism? Queen Mary, the queen of heaven. All the little Mary in the bathtub things that you see on the roads when you drive around and whatever else Mary's in there. You know, a little crown on her head. Queen of heaven. <laughs> it's right in front of your face. I mean, you have to be really dense to, to say, oh, well, 
I think symbolically it refers to Israel in the first century when the, and the whole thing was destroyed and you know some people are just beyond help you know but uh, let's continue um, verse 8 therefore shall her plagues come in one day death and mourning and famine and she shall be utterly burned with fire for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her and let me just stop there for a minute uh, another one of the modern Christian lies that's out there is God's love is unconditional and he's always willing to forgive and whatever and God forgets things. And, uh, uh, no, there's some that uh, God does not forgive and God does not forget. All right? And Roman Catholicism is one of those systems. So if you're a Roman Catholic, non-Jewish Roman Catholic, uh, I would suggest you get out of that system. I really would. Uh, your future is not looking very good. And if you're a Jew with your covenant with death, uh, you would do well to cut your financial ties and um, deal with being poor. All right, you'd be better off poor than receiving these plagues that are coming. Um, verse nine, and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, "Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city!" For in one hour is thy judgment come, and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. Huh. Very interesting. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones, and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all fine wood, and all manner of vessels of ivory, and all manner of vessels of most precious wood, and of brass, and iron, and marble, and cinnamon, and odors, and ointments, and frankincense, and wine, and oil, and fine flour, and wheat, and beasts, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves, and souls of men, and mortgage-backed securities. Oh, excuse me, that's not there. little kick on the uh, Jewish financier thing in the banking system with their mortgage-backed securities, be it commercial or you know, residential. That's one way that you get a slave, in other words, debt slaves. Okay, understand what I'm saying there. Um, uh, verse 14, And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. A lot of things are changing. The world is going in a new direction. And you're never going to go back to the way it once was. And it's going to be even more so in the future. The merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour so great riches is come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by the sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour is she made desolate. Um, you know, it's amazing to me. You would think that the very rich the out, the people out there with the billions and billions of dollars, you'd think that they would just be loaded, that they would have all kinds of money. But here's the point. They don't want real money like gold and silver. They'll trade it, they'll sell it and everything else, but they don't want to just sit on their wealth and just preserve their system and preserve their wealth because, you see, their money has to be making more money. So they'll get money in through fraud and through all these other ways and just selling things and making the right connections and stock market buys and sells at the right time and insider trading and all this other stuff that they do to make billions of dollars, but then they just keep it in the system. They always have it in there. And the Bible warns about trusting in uncertain riches. You see, if you just hold on to precious metals, gold and silver and things like that, it's just sitting there. It's not making any money. It only quote unquote makes money when the dollar system collapses around you. When there's more inflation, but it's you're not investing it. It's not doing anything. That's why a lot of the quote unquote wealthy people, you know, um, they don't even have that much in in terms of real physical assets. They might have some big house or whatever else, but even that they'll mortgage that. Most times they don't buy them outright because then it you know takes more money out. You need liquidity to make more money. And why do you want to make more money? To get more money. And why? To get more money. 
It's insanity. These people, he that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver, the Bible talks about. If you are in love with money, love of money is the root of all evil, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. And these people exemplify that with their life. It's the most important thing to them. That's all they think about. And some of these people are some of the most cheap, tight wads you'd ever want to meet. Uh, they don't care about doing anything but just making more money. And so what happens is they're so invested into this system that they get destroyed in the future. And by the time that they actually get gold and silver to try to maintain their wealth, it becomes useless in the future. They waited too long. We'll see about that here in a little bit. But it uh, just blows my mind how these people do this. And you can see these merchants there. Look at some of the big merchants out there. That was one of the reasons that Nazi Germany went after the Jews, that so many Germans turned on, on the Jewish people because of the Jewish uh, mercantilism and, and a lot of the merchant type of stuff that they were doing, undermining German businesses, putting them out of business, and people were getting mad about it. And so the Third Reich comes along and says, let's exterminate the people. And the people said, sure, why not? It's terrible. But you know what? That's history. It's what happened. And it's going to happen even worse in the future which is one of the reasons why I'm warning you if you're a Jew. I'm trying to warn you. Verse 20, Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft he, sh he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived." You know, one of the best ways to get sorcery out there, to really mess with people's heads, television and movies. And you look at who is involved in a lot of that, Jews, the Jews. I mean, and that's just a fact. It's not racist or hateful or anti-Semitic. It's just a fact. That's the way it is. And again, I don't hate the Jewish people because of it. It's just, I look and, I, and it breaks my heart and I think, why are you doing this? I know why. I know why. Because of the money. But you don't see where this thing is going. And you just think, if I can just play my cards just right, I'll make just a little bit more money, and then I can jump out before things really fall apart. Uh, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. When you read the New Testament salvation, it's now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. You better not wait. Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partaker of her sins and her plagues and things. You better get out. And you better do it soon. Because you're not guaranteed that you're, if you're Jewish, you have no guarantee that you're even going to be here for this. Well, I'll just wait till then. I'm a merchant of the earth, man. I'm making some big money. I'm going to wait. I'll just hold off. And when I see Babylon get destroyed, then I'll say, okay, hey, the book of Revelation is true. And you're not guaranteed that. You are not guaranteed. Some crazy Ishmaelite come up and sees you and you're a Jew. He can kill you before the time of Jacob's trouble even gets started. It's already happening. Verse 24, And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. God blames the Roman system for all that were slain upon the earth. You say, oh, it's the Illuminati. I remember Fritz Springmeier the one time. He said, oh, it's the Illuminati. The Illuminati is the one that slayed all the blood upon the earth. Well, that's kind of stupid because um, the Illuminati only showed up in 1776 with the Jesuit, you know, Adam Vieshaupt. Uh, so, no, uh, the Illuminati hasn't been around that long. You say, what's the mystery schools? Okay, and who controls the mystery schools? That would be Rome. All right. Um, I get really irritated with people when they cover up for the Vatican. Very irritated indeed. Now let's go to James chapter 5. You say, well, Brian, you do some pretty good job, but you did not prove that the merchants of the earth, that they are Jews. You didn't prove that. You're anti-Semitic. I'm going to report you to the, uh, what's the thing, um, Anti-Defamation League or something, ADL, yeah. You know, King James Radio Ministries is a hate group or something like that. Well, I do hate sin. That is true. But I don't hate the Jews. 
James chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. And compare this to what we just read in Revelation 18. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Mystery Babylon is destroyed by fire? Hmm. The great city? Vatican City? You have heaped treasure, treasure together for the last days. You know, I have a book uh, right over here. I don't know if I can reach this thing. Let me see if I can grab this quick. had a friend of the ministry send this to me. Nazi gold. Right there, Nazi gold. And it goes into the thing of um, how the Jews, a lot of times that they were bringing uh, gold and things like that, golden rings into the death camps. And they just collected them, collected them by the box. Like that. Look at that. Those are all golden rings there. If you can see that. Golden teeth. Uh, just collected it up. Remember hearing a, a Jew, uh, Ben David Liu, and he was in one of the camps. And um, I remember he said about how that the, there were Jews that would bring in, you know, really valuable jewelry, and they would try to bribe the the German soldiers, and the soldiers didn't even want it. Hey, I I've got the, you know two billion dollars in cryptocurrency time of Jacob's trouble. How about giving me some of that fresh water that's left because everything else turned to blood. I'll give you two billion in cryptocurrency. People say, you crazy? Uh, the computers haven't worked for years. I'm not interested in it. See, I believe about halfway through the time of Jacob's trouble, I think the uh, whole system, maybe a little bit past halfway, uh, I think the whole system, the whole internet of things and 6G or whatever it will be by then, um, I think it's going to break down. That's why they're riding around on horses at the end. Then, you know, there's pitch black darkness and they're gnawing their tongues for pain. There's no light because everything broke down. Their technology has gone. But uh, verse 4, Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. Ye have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. Ye have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. How much evil has been done by the Jews? And, you know, again, just I'll say in this context, the Jews would require the fake ones and the real ones because the real ones have been involved in some of this stuff. And then there's been the mingled ones that are, you know, covered up their birth and whatever, intermarrying and all the other stuff. Then there's the fake ones that are just completely fake. They don't have any Jewish blood in them, but they're, you know, I'm a Jew, synagogue of Satan. But how much evil has been done by that group? A lot. And the Lord remembers it. So you can see very plainly the tie-in to James chapter 5, verses 1 through 6, to the people that are over there in Revelation chapter 18, the merchants of the earth. You say, but how do you know that it's the uh, to the Jews? Oh, I don't know. James chapter 1, verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greeting. The whole book of James is written to the Jews, the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. But how does that make sense when we have over in the Pauline epistles, Galatians chapter 3, verse 28, talks about there's neither Jew nor Greek. We're all one in Christ Jesus. Hmm. Why is there a difference? Well, because if you read Revelation chapter 7, you have 12,000 from each of the 12th tribe, and that after that, there's a great multitude of all tribes, kindreds, people, nations, the whole thing. Huh. You see, right now, if you're saved, then there's really no difference. God is no respecter of persons. God says, okay, you're going to go to heaven. You're part of the body of Christ. Fine. Jew or Gentile. Doesn't matter. All right. There's different things, different characteristics to both of us. But in terms of salvation, God doesn't say there's a special place for Jews and a lesser place for Gentiles. We're all one in Christ Jesus. But that ends when the body of Christ is caught up. At the resurrection, not the first resurrection, the resurrection of the body of Christ, we go up. The first resurrection has three parts to it. Again, I've talked about this in other studies. I can't go into the big detailed thing here. But Old Testament saints, 
the body of Christ, and then saints in the time of Jacob's trouble. That's the first resurrection. Happens at the end of the millennial kingdom. Don't get confused and say, well, then how does that work with the resurrection you're talking about? Well, what I'm talking about is another part of the resurrection. Okay? Very detailed stuff here that I'm saying. The catching up of the body of Christ that you read about in 1 Corinthians 15 and also 1 Thess Thessalonians chapter 4 and the redemption of the purchased possession in Ephesians chapter 1. It's different than the second coming. You have to understand. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. People that are lazy and lost don't do that and they try to make the whole thing make sense and it doesn't and they make a mess of the Bible. All right? Very important that you have to study. Um, this is not a McDonald's Happy Meal that you just get it and it's a little, you know, fills your hunger and, and you can go on about your way and play and whatever else because of the high fructose corn syrup that you just ate or something. No, in the food, I'm saying. Um, it's This is very strong spiritual meat and it takes you years to study this book. Years to study? I don't have time for that. Well, then again, go do something else because it's not going to work out for you if you don't spend the time to study this. But please understand... The reason that this book here is written to the 12 tribes and the book right before it is called what? Hebrews. It's because it's instructions for Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. Now there are application verses within James and Hebrews to the body of Christ today. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. That's there. You can get instruction in righteousness throughout the whole Bible, Genesis to Revelation. But doctrinally, you have to be so careful and you must learn these things or else the Bible will not make sense and the false prophets will come and they will pick you off and just make a mess of you and destroy you. I've seen that thing many times, people in their pride, and they will not say, huh, you know, maybe I'm wrong here. Maybe I should listen to a guy that has some experience that's dealt with these heretics for many years. Oh, no, I don't need to do that. I've watched a couple of videos now. I'm an expert or something. Um, no. Finally, let's go to John chapter 19. John chapter 19. Um, one of the most distressing things to me that I've learned over the years, brethren, is the fact that uh, most of the preachers I've met and known, be they Methodist or Baptist or Independent or whatever else, um, I, don't, I never really messed with Lutheran or Presbyterian or whatever else, um, I don't even know if I've ever been in one of those cult buildings, but whatever. I try to stick with people that are at least trying to profess that they believe the King James Bible. Um, raised in a non-denominational church building that used new versions. Um, but state was there till I was 17 years old, then I left, thankfully. But the one thing I've seen from guys that at least claim to read the King James Bible is they're petrified of going too far with saying things against the Catholic Church. They're scared to death of it, um, to the point of literally saying, you know, I could lose my church over this. You know, my church building, I could lose it. Oh, and they're scared. And it always blew my mind because to me, it isn't about bravery. It's just about, you know, facts are facts. It's just you tell the truth. That's the Catholic Church is behind this. There's a Jesuit. This guy's a Jesuit or trained that. And you just say it. It isn't some kind of a thing of you have to work yourself up and courage or just tell the truth. That's always what it's been for me. And I've always been baffled why these, you know, Bathlicks, I like to call them, Baptist Catholic, you combine the two, you get Bathlick. I've always been confused as to why they're scared of that. But it's because there's some money involved. It's a career for them. John chapter 19, verse 1 through 15. Let's read that yet. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him, and the soldiers platted a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. Why? Because Jesus was tough. Jesus wasn't some kind of little lovey guy and whatever. Uh, uh, he just took it. Boom, they're punching him, ripping out his beard hair, spitting in his face. Just took it. And Pilate looks and says, behold the man. He's a real man. 
When the chief priests, therefore, and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid, and went again unto the judgment hall, and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Still just... <laughs> That's what the Lord did. Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. And from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not the Jews' friends, because the Jewish Illuminati controls the world, and we run everything. Uh, no, it doesn't say that. Thou art not Caesar's friend. If the Jews run everything, why didn't they just say, hey, we you know, control everything here? Why would they appeal to Caesar? Huh. Well, you see, Brother Brian, that in, in the first century... The Jews were controlled by Caesar, but then they took over. Really? When? They didn't. The Jews never took over anything. That's why they had to make a covenant with death. That's why they are the merchants of the earth that are fed by the hand of Mystery Babylon. Okay? Uh... Whosoever maketh himself a king uh, speaketh against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down on the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the pre preparation of the Passover and about the sixth hour. And he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but ourselves, because the Jews rule the world. That's the end of the study. Congratu uh, oh, wait, no, it doesn't actually say that. It says we have no king but Caesar. The Jews do not control the world. The Jews do not run everything. The Jews made a covenant with death. And God is going to disannul that covenant. Right now, the Jews, they look in the, that whore sitting over there in Rome. And she says, look at all the ways that I can make you money. I can make you filthy rich. All you have to do is just come and drink from my cup. The cup of devils. If you've seen my study, the King Jesus version, very important study. Go and check that one out if you haven't watched it. About the King James version. King James Bible. It's actually the King Jesus version. You can watch that very deep, profound study uh, the Lord gave me a while back. But um, the cup of devils is what she has in her hand. And she says to those Jews, you want a covenant with death? You'll make lots of money. Come sell your soul. The Jews don't go and say, well, you don't tell us that because we control you. Um, no, they don't. Um, if you're newly saved, please take heed. Because this is there are certain things that are lower level areas where the devil wants to deceive people. Then there are certain things that are very high level. And this is one of the most high level things that you need to get figured out. Who is Mystery Babylon and why do they control the Jews? Okay, because you'll hear this anti-Semitic stuff and you want to get messed up, get messed up. This is the thing that the devil can mess up you, mess up Christians worse than anything else. I will promise you that where you start to become a Jew hunter and you just everything's the Jews. And there's a Jew behind this and there's a crypto Jew over here. And this guy here, I think he was born of the Rothschilds and the Rothschilds are behind this. And, the, and this is a Jewish thing. And this is a Jewish Jew, 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 Jew. And you say, what about the Jesuits? What about the Roman Catholic Knights? Why are there high-level Jews, by the way, that take Catholic knighthoods? If they're controlling Rome, why don't they just, you know, we don't need a, your knighthood or something like that. 
they take on Catholic knighthoods when they get high enough. I remember a, a book here, I'm not sure if I have it here behind me somewhere, um, talking about um, a DEA agent, Michael Levine. And um, I don't see it here, but the whole point is it's on my, book, on my bookshelf someplace. might be out in the hallway. I have another bookshelf out that way. But he was a Jew, Michael Levine, and he was working for the DEA, Drug Enforcement Agency. And um, he was talking to some of his other agents the one time, and he said about being advanced, and I don't understand why I'm never advancing. And the one guy just laughed, and he said, oh, come on, Levine. He said, you can't figure it out. And he said, no, I, I'm serious. I don't know why. And, and he said, you're a Jew. Jews can only go so high in the intelligence community. I remember uh, listening to a tape the other day from Ted Gunderson, former FBI special agent, and uh, he was talking about Mac Michael Reconosuto and how that they made this promise software stuff and then how that there was a, they made a back door that they could get in there and get information. And the United States you know, State Department gave it to Israel one of our allies. And they have a back door there that they can get in and steal the Israeli secrets. Huh. And I look at these, uh, Israel, the, the IDF over there, Israeli Defense Forces, and they have, um, you know, what kind of tanks do they have? What kind of air armaments and airplanes? It's almost all from America. But the Jews control everything. They're in control of everything. Then why can't they design their own airplanes and their own tanks and their own Whatever. I mean, they had some unmanned aerial vehicles, you know, attack drone type of things that were made in Israel, but most of everything else was American made. Huh. Because the Jews don't control everything. That is nonsense. So what's the prophecy? How do we end the matter? How do we, what is the conclusion of the matter? Um, if you're Jewish, you might be making a lot of money. Um, I don't doubt that. You might be here in America living a pretty good life, or so it seems. But that time is coming to an end. And I would be a rotten liar if I said to you that uh, I think things will work out and I, you'll be safe here. And we'll pray for the peace of, you know, New York City. I know it's pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Um... I'm going to pray for the peace that's over there in Israel. And if you're a Jew, um, there should be something within you stirring you to move back there. But you say, well, yeah, I kind of feel that, but I think I'm going to wait. I, I just like to see how things work out. I had a Jew tell me that years ago. Um, spirit of slumber is upon me, you know, so I, I'm just going to wait till the time of Jacob's trouble, and we'll see then. I'll, I'll get the signs and everything, then I can confirm things. That's an awful gamble to take. That's a terrible gamble to take. Uh, I would suggest you get out now. Start making plans. Get over there to Israel and get over there and say, okay, what can I do to help fight? What can I do to be part of this, my nation? You see, i am been kicked out of my nation, Germany, Bavaria, the Denklinger family, the Denlinger family. Actually, right here is my coat of arms, the uh, Denlinger family crest. I don't know if I've ever showed this before, but there it is from a book on genealogy that we have in my collection. This is the Denlinger family. Uh, my ancestors were knights, um, nobility. Uh, a lot of people think I'm Jewish. I'm not Jewish. My sister took a DNA test or whatever else. Not one drop of Jewish blood in my family. Um, that's just the way it is. But uh, Rome took over my country. And my ancestors came here in 1720. I say that a lot, I realize, but uh, I just want to prove the point here. Um, we've been in here in America for religious freedom. And I hope that uh, we can re retain our religious freedom. Um, I'm fighting for it as much as I can. But I don't have any kind of a future prophecy that God would bring the Germans back to their land and that you know, Germany would be the ultimate place where God would return one day and set up his kingdom and... Uh, no, no, no. Um, that doesn't belong to me. That's not my promise. But that's there for you if you're Jewish. Israel is the land that you're supposed to have. And there's a lot of usurpers that are over there right now. 
And I pray that you take heed to what I've said and get back over there to your land and do what you can to fight for that land. And if you're a saved Jew, I'd suggest you go back there too. They could use some saved Christians over there. Some saved praying Jews. Very important. And I hear this thing, I just want to address this too. Well, there are Palestinians that are saved. People in Gaza that are saved, they're born again Christians. You wouldn't be in Gaza if you were, if you were genuinely born again. You'd read the New Testament, the book of Galatians, chapter 4, and you'd say, I don't have a right to be here. Just simply that way. Um, there's a lot of Coptic stuff and whatever else over there I've heard of and other groups. Again, you know, I used to say that they're, you know, Chinese Christians, and I had a, a sister from Singapore actually write me, and she said, um, Brother Brian, she said, you need to understand a lot of these supposed uh, Christian underground churches over there in China are just charismatic, nutty, you know, speaking in tongues kind of things. They're not saved. Well, I didn't know that. Um, so, similar type of thing with the, the Palestine, Palestinian type of thing. But that is going to be it. Um, there will be more studies coming out on this, this uh, type of topic, the Jews, and, um, and just uh, some things the Lord's been putting in my heart about the nation of Israel and the Jewish people. And um, it's a sensitive issue because if you attack a lot of the corruption of the Jews, it does lead to an anti-Semitic type of a thing. And people start to, to say, oh, the Jews, the Jews are terrible. They should be wiped out and all this other stuff. That's not what I'm saying. That is not at all what I'm saying. Um, but the Jews, their sin needs to be rebuked. But I also rebuke the ones behind the Jews. The ones, see, the Jews hide themselves. That's true. They are hiding their affiliations and things. They don't like that to be exposed. But the real one is who's behind the Jews. Death. Death. That the Jews made that covenant with. And that covenant is, there's another part of that covenant coming in the future with the Antichrist when he shows up. That's going to be the ultimate covenant with death and hell. <laughs> death and hell, the pale horse rider in the book of Revelation. Huh. <laughs> so many rabbit trails we could have gone on today, but uh, I tried to keep it focused to the scriptures and my notes here. So that is going to be it. Um, thank you to everybody out there uh, for your donations to this ministry. We are entirely supported by the body of Christ. Um, I don't do background checks on everybody. There could be lost people that send me donations. If I know that they're lost, if I know it's a, an enemy, I'll send their, their donation back. I've done that many times. Um, had a literally a Catholic priest send a you know letter to the ministry here with cash. I sent the cash back. Um, I don't take money from the lost world. I am not monetized here on this channel. Um, so your views are important to get the truth out there, but it's not that I'm making money from each view or whatever else. I know it's important to hit the like button and things because that helps the algorithms to say, oh, people like the video and I'll try to get it out there more. But I've seen this thing for years where I'll have a video and it'll start to go up in views and just like that, it's just boom and they just cut it off. Shadow banned, boom, not to be seen again. So I rely on you out there to like the videos, to share the videos with people, send them, post links, let people know about the videos and things that, that helps out the ministry. And if the Lord leads you to give to the ministry, to donate to the ministry, thank you for that. Uh, I cannot thank everybody individually. Um, I just There's not enough time in the day for that. Uh, these studies take a long time um, to put together. I try to do my very best in that. Um, if you want to get a shirt, to, to make the ministry known, you can go to our website, kjvm.org. We have shirts there. There's hats. There's other things that you can get. We'll be adding more to that store as time goes by. But uh, please do what you can to help this ministry grow. Um, I think <laughs> uh, because it's, you know, I'm still just one guy and it'll probably never go beyond me. And it's, it's already just, you know, more than I can handle. But, you know, by the grace of God, I'll try to continue. Um, so uh, I'll do my best. But I just wanted to say that. And I always want to, you know, a lot of people say, brother, you don't even need to thank us. It's your, your ministry is, you know, been a blessing to us. And our donations to you is our way of saying thank you. You don't need to thank us back. 
I, I get that, but I just always want to make it very plain that I'm very grateful to, for all the nice letters and, and things I'm going like this because my desk is over here and I have lots of letters all over the place. Some I still have to answer. They're still up on top of the computer. Um, so right now we're getting ready for winter here, um, getting vehicle stuff done, getting the vehicles ready for winter. Um, I had to heat up the office here. It was 39 degrees in here this morning, Fahrenheit, and uh, warmed it up a little bit so I could do my video with my shirt, the new uh, King James Video Ministry shirt on. And um, so, but I will keep people updated. I have a few new ideas. Um, I'm going to try to write some articles for the website. That's very important. Um, so lots of plans. And of course, number one, most important thing, brethren, please, please pray for this ministry. Um, the attacks that we come under sometimes can be very ferocious. Um, the spiritual attacks can be bad, very bad. And uh, they can hit at any time. And there are times I'm just walking around and all of a sudden I can just, I feel something and it's, a, oh boy, oh, what's going on here? Oh, great, you know. And I start praying and things and the flip side of that is there are some times when I'm in the midst of an attack and all of a sudden it's just like the spirit just lifts, that oppressive spirit just lifts and is gone and I think somebody's praying for us. Thank you. I mean that. We'll meet in heaven. You can tell me the times that you prayed and I'll probably think back to the times that I felt better and I'll say, so you're the one. <laughs> uh, thank you for that. Um, if you say, well, I can't donate, brother, and okay, then donate your time praying because that's very important. Um, I want to be led of the Lord and I want to be able to, to speak things. Again, not so I can say, you heard it here first. I was the only one that was preaching. That grieves me that I have to even say that. But I have have so much experience. I was raised in church buildings and I so many things I just never heard preached on. And it always bothered me. you know. And I just kind of thought, well, I'll just go to some church and I'll be a blessing to the people. And no, I'm not allowed to actually speak the truth there. So finally, the Lord just said, you put the videos out. No oversight over you. I'll be your oversight. And the body of Christ, too. They'll tell you when you're wrong. Um, that's why I'm here. So I'll stop rambling now. Um, but uh, I really do hope that the Jews take heed to what I'm saying before things, the, some of this new Holocaust stuff gets started. It's going to be very bad for them. So we will see you in the next video. As always, thank you very much for watching.